Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradi and here in Huntsville, Alabama for the Association of the United States Army's annual Global Force Symposium, number one winter meeting of U.S. Army leaders from around the world as well as industry thought leaders, media and more. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS and we're positively honored to have with us the uh, Combat Vehicle Brain Trust of the United States Army, uh, uh, Major General Brian Cummings who is uh, the Program Executive Officer for Ground uh, Combat Vehicles, uh, Brigadier General Ross Kaufman, uh, who is uh, the, the uh, director of the Next Generation Combat Vehicle Cross-Functional Team. Uh, I think I got that as part of the Perfect. Futures Perfect. Command uh, Cross-Link. And, uh, and Jeff, yours is much easier. Uh, Je uh, Jeff uh, Langhout, uh, who is uh, the director of the new organization that once upon a time was known as TRADOC, which is... Well, now we're the Ground Vehicle System Center, formerly known as TARDEC. Formerly uh, known as uh, TARDEC. I always liked the Tank Automotive uh, Research and Development Center. But, uh, guys, thanks very much. Sir, let me start with you. I mean, you're looking at uh, the requirements for the next generation, whether it's uh, tank, um, infantry fighting vehicle, robotics. Obviously, Russia has done quite a lot with Iran in Syria and in uh, Ukraine and sort of demonstrating sort of a heavyweight uh, uh, robotic uh, capability. As you look at the battlefield of the future, you know, you mentioned cities, but from an anti-access area denial standpoint, you know, it's going to be, a, I think it's, it's the battlefield is going to be much more brutal than anybody uh, uh, right now even can conceive of it. From your standpoint, what are the key attributes, man on man balances to try to get right so that you're taking as many troops out of harm's way, but also can de deliver that decisive firepower the Army's always sought? Yeah, absolutely. So combat is a nasty and dirty place, and there's nobody uh, better at it than the United States Army. We want to maintain that overmatch. The vehicles that we're developing, both manned and unmanned, must be able to deliver, deliver decisive lethality uh, against our enemies in any environment. We're developing those vehicles now uh, so that America's sons and daughters can remain victorious uh, no matter where they fight and win. And uh, the unmanned piece of it, there are a whole lot of uh, rodeos and experimentations that will be going on. Everybody is sort of captivated with this. Russia does uh, appear to have fielded some unmanned systems. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, what you see from the Russians that you like and what are some of the capabilities that you want to make sure uh, are, are uh, on the unmanned side of things where the U.S. Army has generally used smaller vehicles, not anything that's a, you know, large multi-ton uh, 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 vehicle on the, on the battlefield. Right, so developing a teleoperated robot is not difficult. It's done today, as you mentioned, Russia, but uh, most countries have that can execute that capability. Uh, but really, that's just the nascent uh, start to this this really, really big endeavor that the United States has taken on in its army. Um, we're going well beyond their capabilities. the The system attributes uh, that we're developing are going to change the way that ground combat will be fought in the future uh, if this is, in fact, the direction that we want to go. Again, we're conducting experiments with robots because we want to make sure that we are prudent, uh, both in the application of the tax dollars uh, in, in the budget that we'll be spending, but also want to ensure that our tactics, techniques, and procedures are the best for our soldiers to be victorious on the battlefield. Uh, and obviously, a multiplicity of exercises happening between now and 2024. Absolutely. Um, sir, let me uh, go to you. There's a big RFP that's uh, coming out. So, uh, you know, you've got to deal with supporting uh, General Kaufman and his quest for future vehicles, but then you've got this gigantic uh, vehicle force that you have to try to maintain, and you're actually actualizing some of this. Talk to us about some of the requirements that are coming out in order to try to go to that next generation of vehicle. I know that Bradley uh, is one of those systems. Talk to us a little bit about some of what we're going to be seeing from yeah, your command. So what you're going to be seeing is we're doing a great effort with General Kaufman about taking a look at what requirements he has for the option man fighting vehicle. We've been working hand in glove with industry with getting the feedback to what he's asking for. And what you're going to see in the solicitation that goes out is exactly what requirements that the CFT wanted under General Kaufman's leadership. And then those proposals will come later in the year and we'll evaluate them and do a contract awards. The thing that we're all concerned with around the Army, with the Army senior leadership, is of course that balance between what the future looks like and what we want to have as our legacy force and our improvements that we're going to make. We'll be able to do that with a lot better clarity based on what we're doing here by looking at the things that are doing well in our future efforts, leveraging things in our current force, and be ready to fight a war near term, but also be putting most of our investments in the far term. Um, so it's a very good balance on how we're doing it. 
And how are you doing the requirements trade-off piece of it, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you want to be able to be balancing that cost and requirement uh, quotient. Everybody wants to move faster. I think that uh, everybody in the United States Army is committed to that. Talk to us a little bit about how you're going to do that speed cost balance. So what we've done with General Kaufman and the CFT, working with the acquisition community and with industry, is looking at the reaching requirements, what we call objectives, the things we want to eventually get to, and the things that are threshold, the things that are minimum that what we'll accept. And then taking a look at what the schedules look like that, what industries can achieve, and how much it's going to cost. So that when the RFP goes out at the end of this week, it's a balanced approach with what they're asking for, for them to be giving us something we want as threshold, but they know where the stretch points are and the value associated with things that are objective. Um, I'm your guy, the retract button is about to hit. So, Jeff, let me go to you. Sure. You have an all-new organization here. Talk to us a little bit about how you're interfacing with the new team, uh, you know, in, or in order to be able, because you guys had, uh, you know, there was a sense it's just tank and automotive, but it's actually much, much broader, and this reflects your broader portfolio. Sure. Well, actually, the, the admin of Army Features Command and the CFTs in, 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 in my world has made things much easier because I have a very focused approach now. He sits, he sits barely 100 yards from me. Both of them sit barely 100 yards from me, and we have a very integrated team. And so it's not just me dreaming up new technology I think might be neat. It's bouncing those ideas off of him. He understands what he needs to do for the future. And so together we come up with this is what we need to do from a technology standpoint, because the last thing we want to do is to put out an RFP that's got a bunch of unobtainium in it because that's, that's, that's what we've learned from our past that doesn't work. So it's really a great team. That's why you see the three of us here, Team Warren, right? And um, I think what it's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that when we go out and we ask industry for things, we know it's obtainable in a reasonable amount of time and we're not asking, and we're not asking for the impossible thing. So I think it's really made my job much easier because I'm working on the things he needs me to work on and, and I can influence the things that I think need to be worked on. And it's, it's just a great partnership. Jeff Langhout, Brian Cummings, and uh, Ross Kaufman. Uh, gentlemen, thanks very, very much. You guys have uh, among the coolest jobs in the entire uh, U.S. military. Look forward to coming and visiting uh, with you guys at Team Warren. Would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.